Hi, everybody. Oh my gosh. Okay. Thank you so much for your incredible response to our petition about the spot prawn issue in the last uh, couple of weeks. You know, um, if you, in case you missed it, um, you can check out the post and the petition on our website. Um, what's going on right now, but wow. Uh, yeah. So nonstop since March 3rd, um, when we first got wind of this story, we've been working like mad to try to get this decision reversed late nights, early mornings, you know, creating the petition, writing a press release, um, sending it out to all of our contacts, interviews with the media, live TV, radio, <laughs> podcasts, Zoom meetings with um, our MPs and our MLAs, with Indigenous leaders, with harvesters. The outpouring of support in the last couple of weeks has just been mind blowing. Um, so we've had over 4,000 signatures on the petition now, and honestly, every major news outlet in BC has run a story on this spot prawn issue. And it's all, uh, you know, thanks to that attention that the politicians are listening. And that's a really big deal. You've called, you've written letters to your MPs. Um, in fact, a lot of MPs have called me to say that they've actually received like thousands of letters and calls from folks who are concerned about this spot prawn issue. Uh, one of them even said that this was the best, most organized response from community that she has ever seen. So woo, awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, it's political now. The politicians are listening and that's a big deal. Um, MP Ken Hardy from Fleetwood Port Kells has been a great ally listening and helping us to get straight answers from the ministry. Um, he calls me and emails regularly. Um, my own MP, Don Davies, thank you, Don, has taken up the case. He's been wonderful. Um, MP Elizabeth May and many other MPs have written strongly worded letters to the fish, uh, fisheries minister, Bernadette Jordan, to try to bring some clarity around this issue and to get us some answers. Um, I've also talked with MPs Kenny Chu of Steeston, Richard Bragdon of New Brunswick, Mel Arnold from the Shoe Swap. They've all taken a keen interest and they're applying pressure in the House of comments to try to get some straight answers and get this resolved. Um, our provincial minister of agriculture, thank you, Lana. Lana Popham's also written a strongly worded letter to the fisheries minister on behalf of British Columbians for what's going on here. Um, mayors like Gabby Wickstrom of Port McNeil are stepping up to thank you, Gabby. They're all taking active roles in helping, um, you know, share the story and push it forward. So I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled with the outpouring of support. And so are our fishing families. They've told me that they are just floored by the support and they feel so much less alone in, in this issue because they have you guys have their back. It's amazing. Um, so clearly our members care about the lives of fishing families and you've made sure that our politicians know that and that we demand transparency and consultation in decision making. So where are we at now? Um, so, so far, all we've gotten from the fisheries minister is vague and kind of generic statements like this one. Our government supports a cautious approach to fisheries management, one that prioritizes the health and conservation of stocks, which obviously we all do. We all believe in a cautious approach to fisheries management, one that supports, prioritizes the health and conservation. But what they haven't addressed is that this isn't a conservation issue. So those kinds of generic and general statements are not good enough. We need an actual address addressing of the issues at hand. But still, there are signs of some movement, and we've seen a little bit of backtracking. Initially, when this first came out, the DFO said that effective immediately, spot prawn tails are illegal. And that was just the blanket statement. And early meetings, there was no movement. But then when the pressure began to mount in the last couple of weeks, they changed the message and they said that they would inform, not enforce this year. And so while that's some small comfort because there's some change, that's not good enough either. So fishing families should go out and harvest illegally and just hope that at the discretion of the individual conservation and protection officer that you don't get shut down. For, for what? There isn't a reason. So they haven't addressed this, that there is no conservation issue. And so the message has changed again just slightly yesterday. The minister's most recent update says that the conservation and protection will take an enforcement posture of outreach and education. So to be honest, I'm not even sure what an, an enforcement posture is and what exactly is this education that they're going to give us. Uh, it's still very unclear um, and it's not good enough. Um, they still haven't acknowledged that there isn't a logical reason for this reinterpretation of the regulation at all. And truly the only real solution here is for this reinterpretation just to be reversed. So 
It's not over yet, friends. Um, please continue to help us keep up the pressure. Uh, if you've called or written to your MP and you haven't heard back from them, I encourage you to call them again. Let them know that it's not just going to go away and that the statements from the ministry so far aren't good enough. You know, I live in a world where decisions are made in consultation with First Nations and with all stakeholders. When truth and fact and science are the basis of decision making. That's the world that I live in. I'm not afraid to speak out when I see injustice and I continue to push until things are made right. And I am so proud to live in a world with all of you where you share this belief and this drive to make things right. So thank you for standing with me and all of us at Skipper Auto through this. We will get through it and I'll continue to keep you posted. Okay, have a great day. Thanks, bye.